now. Yeah. Okay. So welcome all to hear to talk about the Ethical. So I am Venus and he, now today we have four presentations. So uh, we have Esther, we have Dorothy, Aaron and Richard. So shall we start with Esther? Can you uh, Sure. <laughs> in, in Stockholm we've had uh, three uh, fashion editathons uh, in cooperation with uh, Europeana Fashion. Uh, it all started because we had a project with European Awareness that uh, John Anderson, a co-worker of mine, uh, was dealing with. So, so one of the things was to, to have events and uh, editathons is a, is a good idea to promote both European fashion, yeah. European material, and also the combination of, of getting uh, yeah. European and, and Wikimedians together. So uh, we, the, the Nordic Museum is a content provider for uh, Europeana and Europeana fashion, so they have a lot of material on Europeana, but they also, for the editathons, uploaded images to Wikimedia Commons. So, so the idea was to compile a list of the objects they put on Commons and have Wikipedians and new Wikimedians work that into articles. Uh, so, uh, for the first one, we also had the Stockholm University as a partner. So, before the editathon, we had a workshop with a master student at uh, at the fashion uh, classes, uh, taught them how to edit Wikipedia, so they were allowed to come or invited to come to the edit from. Uh, Nobiska Museet uh, provided uh, food and drinks and, and we were at their library, so we also had a lot of reference material close at hand uh, and also help from the curators and staff at the museum. Uh, Following that, we had another one on uh, shoes and fashion, uh, mainly shoes, uh, later that year. And also this year, we had one uh, uh, because they, they figured the previous editatons had been such a success, so they wanted to continue working with the European Fashion Portal and, and the European Material and upload more material to Commons to have it worked into articles. And uh, uh, some of the images uh, that were used, and uh, some of the images that were uh, from the events. Uh, usually, the events started with the presentations from curators, from uh, Irving talking about European fashion, uh, to to tell the people what they could find there, how they could find material, uh, and uh, basically teaching newcomers how to edit Wikipedia by showing this is the edit button, this is how you put an image in an article, this is how you put a reference in an article, and then we started editing. So it's not really a long, lengthy presentation of what Wikipedia is, differences between Wikipedia and Wikimedia, Wikimedia Commons, how does it work, free licenses, none of that. We just covered the basic parts of how to put an image in an article, how to put a reference in an article, start editing and then for all of the editathons we also had help from experienced Wikimedians who volunteered to, to come there because they like editing and they think it's a good idea to to get new people into edit and also this worked well with the gender gap issues that we have because most of the people attending were women so uh, it it changed the, the base of Wikimedians uh, to, to make it more equal, not not only guys editing. And for the last, last one, uh, it was also really good because we had cooperations with a lot of other museums for a long time and, and for this one a lot of the staff from other museums came to edit because they could kind of fit it into what they were doing on their own museums and in their own projects and sit there and edit as well as sit in their own museum, so, so they came together and edited. Yeah. Yeah. Who should be next? So the next one is Dorothy. So Dorothy is the uh, Wikipedian in residence in New York, so 
She's going to talk about the Ecuador in New York. So, yeah, and feminism. So, um, actually, I'm not going to talk. I've, I've been a Wikipedian in residence for the past um, almost two years at the Metropolitan New York Library Council, which is a member services organization. So we have about 200 libraries, which are members of. Um, let me actually just set this up. I'm feeling a little <laughs> distracted. Should we ask from the people at the other side of the table how, how many have organized editathons and participated in editathons? There you go. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Should be ready to get started. So cool. here is the meetup page for our project. Um, so I'm not going to be talking about my residency, but this separate project which I've been organizing, and it, uh, they're the global art and feminism meetups. So we wanted to take on the gender gap on a big level, and a lot of editathons are um, they're really amazing and they're very specific to institutions, but to try to mobilize non-Wikipedia users to feel empowered enough to organize an editathon with, maybe they're not Wikipedia experts, but really saying that anyone can organize an edit-a-thon and it can be seen as an opportunity for the organizer to learn too. So I think one of the, <clears throat> one, um, and, and this maybe has been a bit controversial in the Wikipedia community because I've definitely seen, as we're doing this project, um, Wikipedians say, oh no, we need many Wikipedia experts to be at the edit-a-thons and to be helping out. If we don't have Wikipedia experts there, it's not going to be a success. But on the contrary, what I've seen is people with little Wikipedia experience with enough um, resources and training can actually organize edit-a-thons on their own and, and get started. Um, and one of, so I'm, I'm going to show a few slides, but just to um, start things off. One thing that we created to uh, get this working was, uh, I don't know if there's sound on here, maybe no sound, but um, these introductory videos where we, okay, maybe YouTube's not working there, where we, um, we walk through people how to edit, and so we just did like these instructional technology sort of videos with, and it, it goes pretty slowly, but um, we have like a narrator, and this was one way that we, we sort of, you can see some shortcuts we sort of um, were enabled new so organizers to learn how to edit Wikipedia so they could teach it at events without necessarily doing it. Um, so this is just like a quick recap of that. The summary will appear on the history page for other users to easily assess. Okay. So there's that. Um, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I don't know how to view the... This is confusing. Okay. So um, for the art and feminism events, we've been organizing them on International Women's Day in March, uh, the weekend of March 7th and 8th. Um, and this year we had over 75 locations in 17 countries um, in New York, over 200 participants. <clears throat> and um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but some of the big takeaways were over 400 new articles created and over 500 articles improved. So this was a project that really focused on scale and scaling up. However, I do, and here's just some examples of edit-a-thons. This was in New York at a, a sort of hackerspace gallery. Uh, that's me in the middle. Um, this is at the Museum of Modern Art. We had around 200 people come. Um, this is also the Museum of Modern Art. This is in Madrid um, this year. Uh, participants joined and edited about African women. Um, we really emphasize people bringing books and uh, and, and trying to scan or get images as well. Um, here's uh, Banff in Canada, Mid Midlands, Canada. Um, this is in Montreal. University of Southern California, uh, San Diego in Southern California. Um, can't remember where that is actually. <laughs> That's in Lima. 
Madrid, there's another one. Um, there's more images online, but it was really amazing to see a lot of n people new to Wikipedia decide they wanted to host these events because they were interested in the gender gap. Um, and we also kind of framed it to an art audience in particular. So we had a lot of art galleries and artists that wanted to learn. Um, just some takeaways as far as lessons learned and what we could do better and, and, and in the nature of trying to be self-critical. Um, I think that this project perhaps was a little too big to handle and I, I'm interested in kind of scaling back. And I say that because I'm really interested in the idea of global edit-a-thons where they're issue-based and we have many nodes participating. It's really good for the media. It's really good for people kind of seeing the network that Wikipedia could offer them globally. And it's really good just for collaboration. But also, um, as organizers, it becomes a beast that could be too big to handle. Um, just because you really want to make sure all the events have what they need as far as training, but also health, you know, food, so it, uh, distributing funds. We did receive a grant from the foundation to distribute funds, but when we had 70 events, just logistically distributing funds to all of them takes like a immense amount of time. And then documentation and reporting. So I, I do think that we need to think really consciously about scale uh, um, and also how the reliance on local Wikimedia chapters to organize these events. Because we really said anyone can organize, but then uh, chapters, there were a few uh, issues where a chapter such as in Australia said, oh wait, like, why didn't you tell us about this, you know, uh, and it wasn't that we didn't want to tell them, it was just we didn't know the best way to let them know that this institution was interested because it wasn't our local media landscape. So we had to really think about how do we let chapters know that this event is happening, and that's something I think we could improve on. But um, that's what we did, and uh, I think that I'm really excited uh, about organizing around the gender gap and edit a thons about the gender gap. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you Darcy. And then now we have Erin to yeah. share with us. Yeah. Now I feel a bit dwarfed, uh, Dorothy, but yeah. the immense scale. But it's, but it's, <laughs> it's interesting to compare the, you know, the setup and the, and the takeaways. Um, the slides are a bit self-involved, but I try to sort of uh, jump through that and get through the lessons learned because that's um, that's what we that was that's what we're here for. So, uh, Europeana Fashion was, as you heard, so Axel worked on Europeana Awareness, but it was working on Europeana Sound. So these are all these satellite projects around Europeana that we do from our own institutions. So, um, Brigitte and I work at the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision. We're an audiovisual archive, for the, the broadcast archive here in the Netherlands. And because we had been doing uh, Glam Wiki projects in the past, um, we participated in this project to take on another uh, uh, that specific role, uh, being to you know to set up the collaboration. And so we were looking at different ways of, of uh, getting these museums, most of which had no experience in, in working with Wikipedia volunteers uh, previously, um, to have them collaborate with Wikipedia. Uh, the, prim the primary tool being edit the thumbs and then we, we try to sort of feel around what else would be possible. Um, so, you know, it's all fashion museums, so we all thought that it's just there's fashion historians and um, people who all think that, that fashion is a, an important part of culture and it's, it's under, um, underrepresented on Wikipedia. I think you can all uh, read this. So it's 20 museums. That are, that are in this consortium and that were already pretty material online. So um, there's, a, there's a portal that we, that, we, that, we, that we put online with a lot of uh, materials. Um, and I just want to jump through that uh, to give a bit of context. So we set out to do five edit-a-thons within, within the three years of this project and we ended up doing 12, which is a lot less than 70, but... <laughs> uh, but, um, but it's, but I think it's, it's a... Um, the reason why, why we did more is that museums got, became very enthusiastic, um, uh, specifically Nordiska Museum, uh, but also some Dutch museums that saw like this is actually this is a good way of working together. 
uh, and they started doing several. So we did two in the Netherlands, uh, three in Sweden, uh, and then a whole lot of one apps that I would really like to um, to, to make more repetitive for where we see people coming back. Um, secondly, from the other, uh, from the, the funders, the European Commission, who's funding the project, initially thought it was a really bad idea to, to spend time and effort on this, and sort of halfway through they saw that this is really a way of getting people involved. Uh, and so they, they actually asked us to do twice, uh, twice the amount. So that, it's interesting to see funders, uh, as well as uh, museum staff, change their perception of, of how useful this kind of event is. Um, so... In the vein of another uh, part of the project that we did, so we had the, the v and uh, Victorian Albert Museum in London, they, they published uh, a, a booklet about the art guidelines, because anyways we were teaching people on how to bring materials online, so we just uh, copycat it and tried to make a bit of a handbook uh, to tell Glamis how they, how they can uh, set up uh, editathons, and again it's, it's a good comparison to see um, to make with the uh, art feminism ones, because we really relied on I think we, we almost for, forbade anyone to do an editathon if, if the local volunteers weren't involved. Um, because we felt strongly that, um, and maybe this is a bit distrustful of our own partners, but in especially, specifically with museums that have a strong communication department, uh, they're likely to run away with an idea. You know, they, they want to put their branding on it, their, their logo on it, instead of just thinking about the collaboration. So that's why we, we always thought it was really important to get volunteers in with the knowledge and to sort of keep the balance going of doing this together with, with a project and a local partner and a hosting institution and, uh, and the volunteers. Um, we did a couple of experiments, so we tried to do an online challenge. Um, we had one week in which we did three editathons across Europe and then tried to link that also with just having people write online. We had a, a, a hit to organize a wonderful selection of museum catalogs that could serve as a prize. But what we actually saw is that this component of just coming together in physical space and getting to know each other and having coffee and cookies together <laughs> is really important because the online challenge didn't really attract a whole, whole lot of people. Um, another experiment that we did was in two places we tried to do an editathon in a larger cultural festival setting, or like it would be a fashion festival where we would do an editathon as part of it. And again, you have the sense that you know people are too. Uh, distracted to really, you know, sit down and, and write and do research because it's such a such a um, um, uh, task in the process. Hi. Hi. Um, another takeaway that I have specifically from the museums that did it a few times was that often the first time they do it, uh, the museums are very interested in the networking aspect, getting you know their fellow curators in, um, make, showing to everybody that they're doing this. And, and this, is, this is great, you, you get a first good event, people get to know each other, and then only after that first event, after that hump, after getting to know what it is, they really sort of see the value of sitting together with maybe a smaller group, but that's more focused on, on really getting the knowledge uh, sharing happening on, on Wikipedia. So, um, it was actually a sort of afterthought um, that we also urged them to put material on Wikimedia Commons. So that was a learning process for us to, on how to how can you get these mu museums to also share in comments. Um, in Sweden, it was super helpful that Axel and the team already prepared a lot of material with the museums. Uh, when museums had to do it on their own without any help from Wikimedia volunteers, it's really a, it's a technical. Um, it, it's the challenge is a bit too high to really get results. Like a museum would put on ten images, and it would be important also within the museums. Like we've had the director of the, the fashion museum in Antwerp like repeatedly told in presentations how proud she was that their images were not being used on Wikipedia, but then we don't have the local support from a volunteer that that effort is quickly, is not uh, usually supported. Um, oh yeah, then as one aspect, so that in the project we, we made a fashion thesaurus, and all those drawings are now on, on usable on Wikimedia Commons. Um, um, and then I want to make two, oh yeah, we're also awarded with the with an award from the American Association of Museums that I'm pretty proud of. I wanted to make uh, two more comparisons with your project, and I'm going to hand it on to Brigitte, um, which was, one, the gender gap. Um, it's funny because fashion is, fashion is, you know, traditionally seen as something that, that women are very interested in. We've had a lot of discussions internally about can we position fashion editors as something that would attract more women, um, I've had colleagues who were vehemently op opposed to it, saying, you know, it's discriminatory against all the men working in the fashion business and the men interested in it. Um, 
but of course it's, it still is interesting to see the bit of a gap between the people that participate and, and maybe Wikipedia volunteers. And then um, I really like your, your YouTube site. Uh, what Roman did from Wikimedia Netherlands was build this template that's called uh, WP Start. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to find it like this. But it's a really nice walkthrough as well for um, um, for an event like this where uh, people are really being helped with um, uh, filling out their details. So this is what it looks like. Um, and this was coded by Roman in just a day or something. Like, do you have an account? Here's some help with uh, creating an account on Wikimedia. Um, are you logged in? And so it really helps. We only got to use it uh, uh, later on during the game. Um, but then sort of immediately you get to go through this, this um, uh, a series of templates where, in which you also gather the information that's needed. And you know, just as, as your headache, I think I spent two weeks on getting all the reports back from, from everywhere and, and getting the results in. That's so necessary to show your funders how useful it is. So that's a bit of my, my story. Do you think you would have project here to share with us? So, it's on this desktop. Yes. <coughs> so, Oriana Fashion ended last month. Yeah. And based on the success Erin already explained, uh, while writing project plan for Europeana Sounds, we at Sound Vision also took the test upon us to uh, host the edit from for Europeana Sounds. Uh, so I'll tell a bit about that. So I will very quickly say what Sounds is. Well, actually, it's kind of Europeana Fashion or a, any other project, but, but then with the sounds, which include lots of music, classical music, popular music, but world and traditional music, but also languages and dialects, oral history, uh, soundscapes and nature sounds. So it's quite broad and also in its forms. It's of course sound, but also videos uh, of uh, bands playing, uh, also photographs of events or performances, and sheet music, but also photos of the, the venue uh, in the collection. And uh, the goal is to double the amount of sounds in the piano to a million items, or more as a million. Um, we do that in, with 24 organizations in 12 countries. And we have the, with the editatons, we aim actually on enriching and participation. Uh, it's a kind of a different way as it was in fashion. We really want to uh, give users more context about the archival material. So putting it on Wikipedia is uh, a, someone who wants to find information or wants to know more about the archive or find it in a better context so they can understand it better than sometimes in our own website or in, in a, the, uh, the archive of an institution. Um, that's how we aim to do it. With the, yeah, enriching it and uh, we want to, as a goal, want to have uh, 5,000 sound related lemmas to be enriched which is quite a high number, and we're going to do that, well, they, they, in the, the plan says <coughs> with six editathons, but we're going to try with eight or nine. Um, and we actually hosted just one this moment, the upcoming year and the year after that we will host all the others. And this one was actually at our own institute, Sound and Fiction, and it was about bird sounds. Uh, we had just 12 uh, participants, and um, we had like, 35 sounds added to articles and 20 new ones also on the Wikipedia Commons. And what for me it was the very first time to organize it, so it was really a lot of fun. I, I saw her and do it a lot of time, but also helped him a bit with emailing the people. And the big step versus which collection are we actually going to use for the other one? Um, which was kind of in a time frame we had it's a very simple thing. We, we did bird sound because it was there and we could add a few new ones, but most of them were already on Wikimedia Commons. But then the question was, okay, but then we need to find those people who can actually tell us <coughs> something about it because we, from our institution, don't know that much about bird sound. So that is also why we ended up with a very small group. But those were the experts. They really wanted to do it and had, they had a lot of fun with it. So it was a very good uh, day, which is also when we start to use, okay, what do we all need to do and what, what do we do? So I used the fashion handbook to already know a bit. 
But in the end, organizing it was way easier than I thought. So I think that is actually the, the, the key thing. When you hear it, it's kind of a lot of work, but it is actually organizing it like any other events. And the plus is that you can involve a chapter or other experts to really, they have all the information. You just need to bring it together. So I really liked how that worked and that it was actually kind of easy and fun to do. There's a lot of energy and we got a few experts also present giving presentations. So which made actually, we had a whole day, but it was so little time to actually do the editing, which, uh, which is actually where they're coming for. So it's like, how do you make it the program that gives enough information, but also has enough uh, yeah, time to really edit. So that's actually my experience from the edit form. We'll be, we are in contact with five other programs in Italy, Greece, United Kingdom, France, and uh, Latvia. And we're really looking forward to hosting it uh, the upcoming two years. What? So thank you for all of you sharing with us. Is there anyone of you who would like to raise a question here? Is there any question you want to ask? Yeah, sure. Um, I was quite interested in the, well, um, I run the, I'm kind of nominating in charge of the editors in Ireland. Um, and, uh, all the editors. <laughs> yeah, okay. we're already, uh, we've been going since April last year and we've become a user group since um, December, January. Um, and we've had um, moderate to low success with edited books. And it's largely because the existing opinions in Ireland um, aren't interested in meeting in real life. They, they don't come to events. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the five to ten people that are involved in the committee are the interest in opinions in Ireland. So, for the, the art feminism one and some of the ones that I suppose attack the gender gap, that's kind of how I'm trying to go at it because we have to cultivate our own opinions because the ones that already exist, that's not something that they're going to engage with. Um, so I was inter interested, so we, we've attacked it, kind of setting up editors and hoping people will come or attempting to get people to come, but I think the art feminism one, uh, I'd like to know, you know, kind of the groups you recruited, do they kind of come with their own kind of pre-made audience that they mm -hmm. then drew on for support. And yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. And I think people are attracted by a general interest in feminism or in art. And then the, I think the call to action that we used really brought those kind of new audiences in. And that, just to respond to something else you said, I think it's, we're in, in New York, we've had the same thing where we have Wikipedians that they they meet up in person, but just to talk about Wikipedia, and they're more online, and they don't want to attend events. And then the sort of more glam audience that's a little bit more professionalized and institutionalized, and that's great. I think that there it's often like this that there's actually two <coughs> populations of Wikipedians in any given area: the ones that are more just editing and on the, and the ones that want to be part of the events and, and there's one isn't better than the other like they're both important but yeah I think definitely you know, we had to find a new new audiences to support this type of event so we found the kind of the women in, in, in X that has worked a little bit because we've partnered with groups like you know advocacy groups and things like that mm -hmm. so it, was just, it was just kind of heartening to hear that it was successful because the art feminism one is kind of one that um, the art galleries haven't really gotten on board in Dublin. Mm. That's also the problem, we're also centric in the, the capital city, so yeah. you know, everything has been focused there, but hasn't had a huge amount of traction. Well, the, the galleries are not necessarily antagonistic, but are quite frosty. Yeah, I mean, galleries, to have an event, there's often a really high barrier, mm. because any event, it's like, gal often galleries don't do educational events. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they're more, you know, yeah, like critical theory and <laughs> art history and stuff. So having those, com being able to speak their the language of galleries is important too. We are, all our organizers have come from sort of an art, art history background. Which is helpful to have some some insiders mm. in galleries 
to yeah, I've interface with them. Position, but I used to work in <laughs> oh, so I yeah, yeah. Everybody, and everybody yeah, says yeah. it's a great idea, but then when they put the professional face on, they're kind of, you know, I can't, mm. you know, like, I, behind closed doors, I'll tell you it's a great idea, but I can't professionally. Mm. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to give three, uh, uh, there's so many aspects to that, um, but three, three examples, um, you know, apart from, as you mentioned, you know, convincing our own museums, you know, what, what's in it for them, so that, that's a lot of work, and it's only when they see the good example of elsewhere that they're happy to step in. Um, I think, so, it, it, there was a previous uh, panel about the gap between the Wikipedia community and GLAMS and how it's sometimes stressful. I think that's something we had in the Netherlands. At the first editathon here, after that, all the articles worked on during that day, all of them were eradicated by the community. Um, and so, at the second editathon in the Netherlands, we really took more efforts to, you know, put on the banners that is being worked on an editathon, talk to the people who had experienced that. So that's one one example of that friction between existing community and, and new new writers that come up. Uh, secondary, we didn't have not all the volunteer groups, like we would have very enthusiastic museums somewhere, but then the local uh, Glamuki, uh, or sorry, the local Wikimedia volunteers, for example, would be all PhDs in technical subjects. And from their perspective, I mean it's a cliche, but they would say like, you know, fashion yeah, I'll leave it up. So that's so there's a, everywhere there's, there's there's a gap to bridge, and then um, the third was that it was I mean, what made my job very easy is that it's such a popular topic, um, and so every museum had either. So I, th I think we have, we always focus on are you going to focus on your, your your professional networks? So in the Netherlands you have the costume organization or these sort of, you know, your fellow professionals or students because some universities have very fashion educated groups. Um, so there was always this, 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 this round, this, this world that was already connected to it. Which I think, for example, it with was, the bird editing, yeah, it was, was really a lot hard. harder. So that was also because we didn't know where to find them. So there's a lot of uh, bird communities, uh, bird sounds and stuff like that. And I really emailed everything I could find on the internet and let them <laughs> share it in their newsletter. And in the end, uh, well, especially in comparison, Dorothy, 12 looks very little, but it, it is really, it was a very hard-working group, so it was also, we had a lot of results out of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it took a lot of effort, but they were really enthusiastic and really worked very hard. So, yeah, they're really, also a few were really committed on, on doing this, uh, on writing more on Wikipedia, that I think is maybe uh, those kind of versions you know, with fashion, I, I think of some of those people will not write again. And uh, yeah, these were really interesting people with a lot of energy for it. I, w um, I wonder if, are we in open question time now, or is there no <laughs> Okay, okay. I, um, I had a question for everyone, anyone that's organizing the editathon. <laughs> what? You can ask a question. Oh, do you want to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Like maybe um, few points that um, you consider to be uh, technical points you consider to be a must do for edited points. For example, I there are no any information on time schedule you consider to be perfect one or maybe is it possible uh, to is it okay edited on continuous uh, is um, proceeding in a few, few days, or just one? I, I think Yankee and Dorothy probably has the same experience, where, um, you know, we always we always came up to the museum and said, well, we think this is what you should do, and then they would look at us and say, well, I think a day is really long, I'm going to do half a day. Yeah. Or, you know, you want to do this all in one day? No, we want to have separate events. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the Greek the Greek one was a partnership where they even did three days of uploading images and all, and ended with the editor phone. It <laughs> so it's so it's all sort of it depends on the energy that you have and the people the people around you. Um, I think one so one other example is in Italy they had a full day, but in the morning they just spent an entire morning on lectures with eighty students, and then forty out of those students they took in the, the editor from uh, part. Um, but I'd say it also depends on what kind of audience you're targeting. If you're, if you want the glam staff 
to come to the event, you need to have it during the day when they are working because they don't want to come at night. And if you want to have volunteer comedians come and edit, then you need to have it in, at night because they're doing their day jobs during the day, so, so they can come until after five or six o'clock. Yeah, just so yeah. it depends on kind of what target. So it's, we had some starting in the middle of the day, continuing until the museum closes at eight or nine or something like that. So, so some people come for the afternoon and they go home when their work day ends, mm -hmm. and some people come for the for the evening when they're done working and then come to edit on their free time. Could could we do an editathon version of that Waterstones idea? And Waterstones in the UK had this thing where they, they accidentally mocked up a, a, a shopper and then they made that into an event where they would invite people for one night at the bookshop and did these events. Maybe we can do that with an editathon, have a big pajama party. You know, right? that, that would be the Mexican with the 50 yeah, hour editathon. Hours. <laughs> well, I do think that um, another thing as far as planning, like hours, um, we had, in New York, there's a, a very big Jewish community, and we were holding events on Saturdays. And then we realized that we were actually excluding um, Jewish people that can't use transportation or electronics on Saturdays. And so, you know, we had to think about, okay, we need to be aware of the religious holidays observed by our communities. and and make sure we're not excluding anyone by scheduling on religious holidays. And then also, yeah, checking competing events that might be happening. And that was that's just a little thing, but it, it was something we had totally forgot um, until someone had told us, so. So you have to consider a fund for lunch that you organize a little fund for the whole day, because if people have to spend money uh, going to the Edithathon and having lunch, so maybe uh, you need funding from the institution or whatever. So if you plan to do a Edithathon for the whole day, maybe you have to think in these things also. Yeah. It's, it's, it's shameful, but I think, you know, I think we had quite a, we had a very relaxed budget uh, and most of it went to food. Because it's just so important to get people, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, there's not that many things that you spend money on at editathons either. I have a, a question for everyone, um, which is so. Um, there's maybe not in this room, but in the larger Wikipedia community, a debate about um, about um, whether editathons are impactful, um, if that makes sense. Some people say, saying, oh, they take too much time to organize and the results are often not there. And my response has always been, it's not really like, I don't like doing metrics on editor fonts. <laughs> I find it like, like offensive to the idea of an editor font in a way because it's really not, at least for me, it's more about educating people about Wikipedia and consciousness raising and getting people started, but not about how many articles produced on that day. But I do think that, like, I, I ask myself, like, is this the most impactful method? Because I often find that institutions want to do edit-a-thons first before they do content donations. So to me, it's like a way of kind of in getting them interested in Wikipedia, so then maybe we can ask them for a more substantial image or metadata or content donation, but then, I mean, it is a, a pretty intense amount of work, uh, especially for volunteers to do, because it's, it's reaching the point of pretty professional event organizing where I wish I could pay volunteers to organize edit a because often it's, it's weeks of work, and uh, I just wonder if anyone has <coughs> thoughts on that. On those things. Well, I'm not quite uh, against editor plans <laughs> by media traps because you must see what are you interested in as a trap. You must look what are you interested in as a volunteer, what are you interested in as a chapter, and finally, well, what is the museum you're interested in. And if you put resources in, like in the time of volunteers, the time of Wikimedia staff, and maybe even money must ask yourself, what are the results? Are our goals met? And our 
goals are not met if staff members of the museum are trained in any business, not our business. Uh, our expectations are not met if people write one article and then the activity of the tone is over. Often those articles are not really that impressive, whether you have glam staff people or students at a university. So investing time to educate a person how to write a Wikipedia article and then they write one article or less. That's just a waste of your resources. So I think if you really want to have Wikipedia lessons in what manner ever, you must be really filtering what people let into their lessons. Because those are glam staff people who they, they like to go to to an editor term, I hate this word, and they uh, well it's, it's a nice uh, afternoon. Yes, it's fun, yes, but of course they will not go on having a new hobby at Wikipedia. Writing one article is cool, you can show off with that. People are interested, I want to write my own article, why do they want that? Well, they want to show off with it, and of course they don't write a second one, they would be a stupid nerd if they do it. So, uh, filter that. Don't waste your time on people who will not go on with editing, and you, you already know it in advance. Like the students just want their credit points. I don't blame them, but we are not the volunteers, and we are not the movement that has the task to educate students about writing skills, not to plagiarize. That's the task of the universities. So, what is the I'm a little concerned about how cynical of you that is, though, of, of the general audience and. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm a skeptic. I'm not a cynic. <laughs> okay, well, I'm hearing cynicism, but I appreciate the, the nuance there. Um, I do agree with you that I think some people who participate, or maybe the vast majority of people who participate in edited bonds, likely won't be long term or, or major contributors, but I don't necessarily think that that diminishes the value in exposing them to the possibility of contributing at a later date or having a better understanding of what Wikipedia does and is capable of doing. Maybe I'm just naive or optimistic about it, but <laughs> it sounds it's a little like interest. the idea of, of wasted time is yeah. difficult for me to well, It's okay, but who is interested <coughs> in that what you just mentioned? Who is interested in that? Yes. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think not you, but yeah. maybe, I'm not sure. Well, well also but, from the glance point of view, uh, we are getting people used to our archive material. Mm -hmm. You know, the, those few people are coming to an edifice will see that we have what we have in our archive, but also that, that we can share it with other people. So for, for them, even if they're not writing that much, for us it's very important to see uh, the way we, we want to open our archive. Yeah, that's an important distinction. So for Glenn, the, the, the uh, goal is already quite different, I think, for, for a Wikipedia. You're showing that to what people? Sorry? You're showing that, the glam, the museum is showing that the archives, the content, to what people? That depends on, on the, the goal of the editathon. You know, it is a participant of the editathon and I think every archive have, has a different target group they want to have in their house to show what they're doing and, and make that connection, that networking uh, part. For, for a glam that is, is I think, uh, very important. Good for you. My question was, what is it good for the Wikimedia chapter? Possibly, it is an occasion where Wikipedia and see that you don't need new people, maybe it's Wikipedia. many editors have a lot of Wikipedians already, mm -hmm. and they go there, and maybe they say, oh, there is one that I could use. Okay, but that wouldn't uh, make the need for an editor job. Yeah. You don't need to teach people how to edit. If they don't edit like that, if you want to teach Wikipedians how to use your content, okay, it's up to them about that. I think another, uh, another example um, within, I mean, there, there's many sides to it. Um, so I think both the, the repetition house, for me, it was, it was very interesting to see a group of people that were interested in fashion in the Netherlands having participated in one editathon, sort of uh, the positive effect of repeating such an event so that the, their first thought isn't Wikipedia, that's true. Um, but when they come together sort of every few months in, in this little same group, that really helps them in, in focusing their attention. And um, 
Secondly, I think there are steps, and this is, this is actually why I, you know, why we call the panel improving editathons. There are, I think, some things you can do to, to raise that, the, how do you say that, um, the involvement of the people that come. Um, and a very simple thing that also Romain and Sapiti, he's not here, reminded after the last one was simply emailing everyone who came afterwards with a, with a nice little email, sort of breaking down what everybody did and say, well, this is, you know, what you did there was good, could you please, so that people sort of, it, 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 you know, guiding them a, a little bit towards the writing process. And I think such, like, little things uh, could help keeping people involved, and even though they might never become full Wikipedia editor, editors, um, have a bit more of an involvement in what it means to, uh, to you know, share knowledge on it. We, for example, we, uh, we send a, we must have, uh, we leave a message a template in discussions of people participate, who participated in a later on. And we invited them also to, to keep writing at least one month about this topic. And we track this contribution. So the metrics are not only about uh, uh, what happened that day, but also the whole month. So because at that day, maybe it's more a workshop for new people or not new people, but uh, and then they could work right at home. I can't previously uh, know if these people uh, will edit or not, but uh, if 20 people attend the, the data from and five or four people keep editing Wikipedia, for us it's okay. So, so did I understand yeah, that you have the numbers of the month? Sorry? So you track the people, you have the numbers, how many people kept editing during the month? Yeah. After the editing. Yeah, well, I yeah. Have, we have the uh, table in its uh, page on Spanish Wikipedia. Okay, so, so 20 people were participants, and how many edited after the event during that month? Well, we have the whole contributions during this month. We, we don't know if the edit was done that day, the second day, or the 20th day. So. But we can track the uh, how in the, the kilowatts were increasing or not. So if you need uh, this bot, for example, to track the edits, you can contact me. And you put the link on the internet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but the bot is, is run by uh, an member of Wikimedia Spain and uh, it's not the code, it's not a, in everywhere. So he has the code, but it's not it's not the code, it's not the code everywhere. So he has the code, so he can <laughs> share this tool, but I can't uh, share any link at uh, that moment, so sorry, but you can contact me or, or I can leave a message in the other part later. And also uh, about uh, what happened up after the uh, well, Erwin contacted us, uh, me, and I contacted other members of Wikimedia Spain, and we organized a Lithathon in uh, European Fashion Marathon in Madrid, and then uh, that museum uh, will uh, will have a um, Wikipedia presence after this experience. So, thanks to this Athon, now there are, uh, there is a, a museum with a Wikipedia presence. So maybe uh, we create also links, uh, not only for editing, training people, also creating mm -hmm. links and. If you had from 20 participants, four people who continue editing, that I would call that a huge success. Uh, because I would not expect that to raise in a two-figure percentage. Mm -hmm. All right. So I would rather think that you might get one from 20 and then you would be already within within the, the, the success group. That we're saying mm -hmm. those four people become regular editors. Yes, that would be a huge success. Yes, it would be about the business stuff. Yeah, but, but I, th I think that the point that's also being being made throughout is that there, you know, there's there's the metrics part of it, and but there's the different ways in which it impacts not just you know new editors, but it also it, it impacts existing editors who may discover fields they didn't know about. It impacts the yeah. 
the, 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 gla the glam organization that might have a closer collaboration. Yeah. Maybe, it has maybe, maybe that's that where I don't agree with what you seek. As a matter of fact, uh, his points are, I think his points are valid. Uh, although sceptical, but I think your points are valid questions to be raised. Uh, there is another thing, uh, and that's another phase I would like to. Uh, we can't, well, in, in any case, we can't leave it up to education to bring people to Wikimedia. So, uh, it's not about their writing skills. It's not about. Uh, it's about getting interested in contributing to <coughs> knowledge. In my opinion, and uh, if you don't tell people, oh, you can do that, they will do that. It's it's like to me, it's like sports. If you don't tell people that you that they can put. Uh, planks under their boots and, and sticks in their hands and go down the slope and slope, at huge speed, uh, <laughs> nobody will ever do this. Um, and, and so I think that if we don't, to, to, don't talk to students and to, uh, and to uh, pupils in, in, in the later classes, in, in, the, in what's not called third grade, which is 15 to 18 years old, if, uh, if we don't talk to those people, we will see what is happening, what is currently happening. Uh, a, teachers who say, You can't use Wikipedia. Professors who say, no, You can't use Wikipedia. Because I can't publish it. Because that's the, that, that, that's the, why, that's the reason. Yes, so that's the reason. Why you have quite different teachers. Well, well you have quite a, but But those voices will, will remain. And you will you, you want to have uh, you want and you will have a number, uh, we want, you want you will have it. the pupils who come up with an article of uh, Willem de Zweig, uh, first king of this beautiful country that hosts this this conference, and they will put in he was an asshole. Well, well, I mean, I that's that's that's, that's the thing about bringing it up to the question again. What is an editor, Tom? Why I don't like the word is that do you mean Wikipedia lessons or do you mean an information event? So be very clear about that. Information events can be very great, but don't teach that a Wikipedia to people who want that. I tried to make the distinction in the events that I organize between a public editathon and a behind the scenes, I call it editathon, which is a training, it's really a staff training that you do with an institutional group. Um, and it can be in, from, in multiple departments. So the structure of outreach that I've done has been email, you know, the director of the archives, director of the library, director, like the people that you think might have an interest in Wikipedia. Send them a general email about opportunities for collaboration and suggest us internal Behind, or behind the scenes staff training. And then usually the next step for me has been meet one on one with whoever responds, or maybe it's, and then discuss, uh, discuss Wikipedia in a more general way. And the most logical step has usually been then let's do an internal staff training where we invite everyone that's on the staff. And it's usually people across the departments in library archives, curatorial, sometimes external affairs and publicity. Those are people you have to watch out for, but invite them. Um, and interns, okay. So that's, you could frame it as an edit-a-thon, but the purpose is to train staff, but really, at least for the way I've seen it, the purpose is not to get all the people that attend editing, but actually, for me, it's a success if one staff member keeps editing, because then you've created someone on the staff that is basically their internal Wikipedia residence, and uh, or or you know is that you can communicate with in the future, and is your point person at the institution. And I consider that an editathon, and it's a different model than a lot of what we've talked about here of the public invite, you know, Twitter invite. 
but it it has uh, and it maybe has a different impact but yeah I agree that you know maybe we should move on from the term editathon it's pretty well dug in the ground at this point like we we all know it and we all use it like changing it might be hard but I think different models are good different models of you know reframing you just gave me another look at the editathon which which I wasn't which was not in my frame of thought. So, basically, I was thinking of getting a general public. Actually, you say the contrary, keep the general public out. <laughs> well, it might be a more successful formula. Well, what are you covering in those kind of behind the scenes, whatever you want to call it? Um, are you showing them basic editing, or are you just walking them through potential uses? Uh, basic editing and then case studies mm -hmm. of what other institutions have done. Okay. Yeah. And then sometimes a talk about the Wikipedia community and culture. Right. Time, time for a session on staff training and coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Getting coffee. Thanks everyone for your yeah.